Today we're talking about wireless video transmission systems and specifically we're going to be testing out the Shimble ZO Link 1000. So if you don't know what wireless video transmission systems do or why you'd use them, they basically allow you to beam a video signal from your camera to a monitor and usually you'd use them to give a director or a client a wireless video feed so they can review what's going on. The other use case might be you might use it if you've got a focus puller, so if you've got a mobile camera up, uh, the focus puller will probably be stationary using a monitor to pull focus wirelessly. But sets like these can also be used for online live video streaming as well. Originally wireless video systems were pretty pricey and there weren't many decent options outside of something like a Teradex system. But in recent years there's been like an explosion in affordable wireless video transmission systems for those on a budget. So this system retails at $499 or around £499 and they have an advertised range of up to uh, 1000 feet, that's just over 300 meters and a latency of 0.08 seconds. So in the box you get two packs, a transmitter and a receiver. Each of them has two antennas and you get a spare one in the box as well. Both sets have an SDI and an HDMI port, which is great. They can output up to 1080p, up to 60 frames a second, and that comes with audio as well. And you can also alternate between SDI and HDMI. So for example, if you're connecting your camera to uh, the transmitter via SDI, you can still uh, connect your monitor to the receiver with HDMI and vice versa. They're pretty lightweight, they're made of aluminium, so, you know, they feel fairly sturdy, I guess, but I wouldn't want to drop them. They have some simple menu navigation buttons and they're powered uh, by a single Sony MPF battery. You can also power them through the USB port uh, with a, something like a power bank or, you know, a V-mount battery. They seem to be really low power. One or two Sony batteries saw me through a shoot, so that was great. And just using them is really easy. There's no fiddling around to get them connected. You turn them both on and they just connect automatically. A bit like a set of radio mics. They also have this really useful scan mode that you can run on the receiver. And that will basically uh, let you know which frequencies are the best to choose from and which uh, ones you should avoid. Another really cool thing about this system is at the same time as outputting to the receiver, you can also um, output wirelessly to an iPhone or iPad. Either of those devices just has to connect to the Wi-Fi signal from the uh, transmitter and then you just use the Shimble app and you get your picture through there. And it just works really well. Uh, I love how they've made it so simple to use. To quickly connect them, you can bring up a QR code on one of the packs and then you can just scan that with your iPad uh, camera through the app and then it just instantly connects, which is just amazing. The only downside is that they don't have an Android app, which is a little bit frustrating because my phone is an Android phone. I think if I was wanting to review an image, the iPad would probably be my device of choice just because you get a slightly bigger screen. So the headline feature of these is that they're rated to work at up to a thousand feet, which is about, I don't know, just over 300 meters. The slight caveat here is that that is within line of sight. So that just means that the receiver and the transmitter have to be within sight of each other. If they lose that, then you won't get anywhere near that range. We thought it'd be cool to take them out and just put it to the test. So we went out with my mate Jake and we brought his drone. We measured roughly a thousand feet on Google Maps and then we walked it out, uh, connecting the transmitter to my Lumix S5 and then beaming it back to a monitor that was a thousand feet away. You'll note when I go down these steps and lose line of sight, that the image does cut out, but it does come back in once I get back up to the other side and uh, regain line of sight with the receiver. And what we found is that, yeah, they work. They, they pretty much exactly bang on, cut out as we pass that 1,000 foot mark, which is really impressive for such a, an affordable set of video transmitters. So there are three quality modes on the packs, quality, normal, and smooth. We had the sets in smooth mode whilst testing as this gives the best range and lowest latency, but that does come at the cost of some video quality. If you are going to be working in slightly more challenging environments or across larger distances, then make sure you set the sets to smooth. Um, but obviously if you're indoors and you're a little bit closer, you can probably get away with using quality. That was it, testing it in a sort of like an extreme scenario, which probably wouldn't match most professional scenarios. So testing them out in my fairly small uh, London flat. 
We've got the uh, shimble here. It's taking a feed from my monitor, the Shinobi 7. Uh, and obviously that's got an SDI to the monitor. And then we're taking HDMI into the shimble. The monitor I use is the Blackmagic Video Assist. So I was able to record the screen's output and sort of give you an idea of what the quality of the signal was like. And generally they did just perform great. So here we have it set to quality mode and I'm moving to the other room. Again, it's probably about five or six meters away across three rooms. You can see it holds up really well. Um, there's a little bit of glitching here and there. I think in most professional setups, you know, at most you, you would have a director or a client, you know, one or two rooms down a corridor. So in that instance, on the highest quality mode, you can be pretty confident that it's going to perform well. Obviously, if you set it to smooth mode, you're going to get the best performance. You're going to be able to push them a little bit further. So to test this set out to its max within an internal indoors scenario, I put the monitor in my bathroom and then I walked out a sort of a diagonal uh, line, sort of the furthest distance I can get in my small flat um, and brought the camera in here into the living room and then out into the balcony as well. So at that point you're going through like a couple of walls, you know, tiles in the bathroom, kitchen, living room, furniture, all that. So that's quite a challenging test and on the smooth mode it performed really well. Even going out onto the balcony, uh, the sets were sort of transmitting and they only really dropped out when I got to the sort of furthest opposite point uh, at the edge of my balcony. So I think if your director or client were next door, you'd be absolutely fine using these. In terms of the app, I also did see a big reduction in range when using it. The furthest I could get in my flat was just one room along. I guess that's probably more to do with the iPad's own internal antennas rather than the limitations of the set. So if you're going to be in the same room or you've got maybe a director interviewing someone, the iPad is actually a really good solution when using them with this system. So who is this system for? Number one, I think if you're a vlogger and you regularly film yourselves uh, and you need a simple monitoring solution that's wireless, uh, I think this could be a really attractive system. The second obvious use is obviously for providing a direct or a client a feed for review. Definitely if you're working in close proximity then this system is going to be perfect for you. Um, it's low power as well so you won't have to worry too much about swapping out batteries and stuff. According to my tests, I think even if your client or director is in another room or slightly further down a the corridor, they're going to hold up okay. Anything more than that, then you're probably going to need a more powerful system. There has to be something said, there's a certain wow factor with being able to hand your client uh, an iPad without them asking and providing them with a video feed to review what you're filming. So for critical focus pulling, I don't really think these uh, would be the best option. It's definitely possible, um, but you're going to be fighting against that latency. So if you've got a mobile camera op who's filming a moving subject, your ability as a focus puller to respond to changes in the frame is going to be really hampered by that delay. But I guess if you were just, you know, monitoring uh, uh, an interview where someone's stay, staying fairly static and the camera's on stick, I think you would probably be okay and you'd probably be able to work with that latency. Looking at the closest competition out there, you've got the Hollyland Mars 400S Pro. The range of those is rated only at around 121 meters, whereas these are over double that at 300 meters or 1,000 feet. So if you want a similar range to the Shimble set, you're going to be looking at something like the Hollyland Cosmo C1, but they're almost double the price uh, of the Shimble system. Otherwise, you know, you're going to be looking at a Teradek system, which, you know, runs into the thousands, two, three, four thousand pounds, depending on which you go for. So if you do decide to pick the Shimbal setup, one thing just to bear in mind is that you'll need to have somewhere to rig it on your camera and then also vice versa on the monitor end. Also, if you're giving the monitor to a client or to a director and they're going to be holding onto it all day, it's probably good to think about a sort of little mobile rig setup that you can put together so you can give the director something that's going to be comfortable to use throughout the day. That's probably going to include some sort of strap that they can wear around their neck so they can let go of it when they're not using it and probably, you know, some comfortable grips or handles on the pack. Also, you need to probably think about power as well. So using a small mini V-Lock battery to power the monitor and the receiver at the same time is probably quite sensible. 
if you're shooting handheld or your camera op is uh, shooting handheld, then obviously just make sure um, the transmitter that's rigged to the camera is out of the way. So when the camera operator is moving around and operating the camera, they're not going to be banging to the antennas on the transmitter. Having the transmitter and the receiver as high up as possible is probably going to be sensible in terms of getting a, a stronger signal. In terms of uh, an affordable set, this is my first that I've owned and used, so I'd be really interested in finding out if you've used one, what have you been using, how do you rig them up, how do you power them, uh, and also like how are you rigging up your sort of director's monitor as well. Any advice or tips, let me know in the comments down below. Um, thanks for watching, and until next time, see ya!